So recently my video about the Just Go ATM Phantom got a bit of attention, and I'm getting questions and comments about it almost daily. So, I thought I would do a very quick video to try and answer as many things as I can to hopefully help those who are interested in the case. If you haven't seen my Just Go ATM Phantom video, make sure you check it out before watching this one. Without further ado, let's get into it. Question 1. Did this really happen? I can't find any sources. Yes, this is a true unsolved case that really happened in 2004 in Yokkaichi City. It has been featured in many big reliable news outlets, including the Nikkei, Asahi Shimbun, Yomiuri Shimbun, as well as Yahoo and MSN News. There is also a summary on Wikipedia, which is probably the most accessible article to people. It was also featured on a national news show with well-known presenters, including famous foreign TV personality Dave Spector. I didn't use this footage in my original video because it is of such poor quality, but I was able to get some of my footage from it, as it spoke about how the incident happened and the old man's cause of death. While it doesn't show any CCTV footage, it does show a CGI video of how the incident happened as well as the actual ATM where the crime took place. The thing is, all the sources on this video are, of course, presented in Japanese. I was the first person that I know of to create an English resource on this story, so when you try and search for it in English, usually it's only my video that comes up. I can read and speak Japanese, which is why I was able to discover this story and create my video. Question 2. Where's the CCTV footage? The CCTV footage was never released for a number of reasons. You have to remember that Japan is quite different from the West when it comes to privacy laws. If you read about a lot of Japanese crimes, you'll probably notice that the names of people involved are very rarely given. Like in this case for example, the man was referred to in reports as Man A rather than his real name, and his images were never shown. The footage of crimes is almost never released to the public unless it can be of any help to catching the criminal involved. Bereaved family members can also prevent the police from releasing it to protect the privacy of the deceased family member, but it is unclear if they did so in this case. The police released the two images from the CCTV because they were the only stills from the footage that could potentially be used to identify the woman. If CCTV footage even if it is of perfect quality is available, police will not release it if it doesn't help the case because they have no reason to. Question 3. Was she wearing a mask? Eyewitnesses at the scene, including trained police, said she was not wearing a mask. Looking at the CCTV stills, I understand why so many people find that hard to believe but it appears that the amateur enhancements made by the police before they released the images to the public have made the face look almost unhuman. The first image released looks a little more normal than the other one, but it is still a little strange. A weird mask would stick out to witnesses at the scene, so the fact that none of them said she was wearing one makes me think that the theory is all based on the poor quality of the CCTV stills. While I can't conclusively prove that the woman was not wearing one myself, I tend to trust people who were actually at the scene, rather than my own judgement based on a couple of images. Question 4. Was the baby fake? A fake baby would be a clever idea for a crime, and it wouldn't be the first time such an act of deception was used. But from eyewitness and police reports, it appears that the baby was real. Police were even able to use these reports to estimate the age of the child, and I believe I read an unverified piece of information a long time ago that stated that the baby was crying and moving during the struggle. Information about the child is very limited, but judging from what I have read, I would say that it is real. Again, I can't 100% say that it was real, but from the information we have, it seems extremely likely. Question 5 why was she not caught on CCTV leaving the building? This is not discussed so much in the reports, but it appears that the shopping centre did not have sufficient security measures in place. Not all exits were completely covered with CCTV, and it seems that there were blind spots. 
It may not have been as difficult to slip out of the building as it seems. Police have also theorized that she was a local, so it is possible that she scouted out the building before to find exits where she could slip out unnoticed. And judging from the very poor quality of the ATM CCTV stills, we can see that what CCTV there was at the place was really bad. It is possible that the woman was actually in some of the exit footage, but police simply couldn't identify her or decisively prove that someone caught in the exit footage was her. If she had changed clothes before leaving, it would have made identifying her even more difficult too. Question 6. Was she a ghost? No, I don't think so. Personally, I don't believe in ghosts and think that this particular incident was just a robbery that went wrong. She was walking around the ATMs, keeping her eyes open for people who she thought would be an easy target. I believe she saw an elderly man with his hands full of shopping and decided that he would be easy to rob, so went for it. When she was unsuccessful in taking his cards, she reacted angrily and screamed thief thus causing him to be attacked and allowing her to escape. It is a very strange and interesting case, but in my opinion, there is nothing paranormal about it. Again, her face in the CCTV stills and the fact that she disappeared without a trace during the commotion has caused a lot of theories to develop, but as I said, I believe this is just a robbery gone wrong. Question 7. Was this an assassination? No, I don't think this was an assassination. Politicians or other similar high status people are usually the targets for assassination, not an elderly retired man from a relatively poor family. All accounts of the man and his family were very positive, and I find it hard to believe that someone would go to the trouble of investigating the man's schedule only to attack him in broad daylight and risk being caught. She tried to pickpocket him stealthily after pretending to bump into him, but like I said, when she was unsuccessful, she reacted in the way she did. I don't think the fight between them was planned. Question 8. How did the man die? I actually answered this in my video, but he died from heart failure brought on by arrhythmia from the stress of the incident. The attack and subsequent handling by police caused the man's blood pressure to skyrocket, and because of his advanced stage and poor health, it proved deadly. Tests were carried out after his death, and he was found to have no chemicals in his system. Question 9. Will you make any videos about Japanese ghosts? I'm not really sure. My channel focuses on true crime or other strange stories, so I don't think I will make any videos on ghost stories. If something catches my attention, however, I might make a video about it, so stick around for more. I make videos on incidents that I find interesting, so I may jump around with topics, but they will always focus on Japan. Anyway, thank you for watching my 10th YouTube video. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you want to see more. Sorry this is just a quick follow up video, but my next one will be back to the usual stuff, so keep an eye on this channel. I hope I answered your questions and cleared up a few things. Let me know if you have anything else you would like to know about it, and I will try to answer it as best I can. Until next time, goodbye.